ask for the ancient path. Magtanong ka, tanungin mo. And your question is, where is the way that is good? Where is the way? How do you know it's a way that's good? The Bible said, because when you walk in it, it will bring what? Rest in your souls. It is so old that nobody has been walking in it. In fact, the answer is, we will not walk in it. That's what the people say. Jeremiah was prophesying. He's saying, there is the way that God has laid down. It's called the ancient way. Go through this because when you go through this, it is good. It is good for your health. It has less calories. You know, it is good for your health. It is good for your spiritual health. And it's good for your soul because it gives you rest. And what is this? You know what I think this is? One of this, the ancient ways is the ways of discipleship. It's the way of discipleship. Is the ancient way. Discipleship is the ancient way. There was a there was a story in Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty five to thirty four. The title, the cost of being a disciple. There were a lot of people came in, coming to Jesus, and he said to them, you know, you know why people are coming to Jesus because he's been doing a lot of miracles. So you, uh, one, one, uh, one uh, father one time woke up, noticed that the daughter is sick, went to Jesus, the daughter died eventually. Jesus brought him back to life. Another person has a lot of leprosy. He has been an outcast, cannot go to the community. The Lord healed him, cleansed him. Another one was a paralytic. He had probably a stroke. Now he's walking. I mean, if I am in the time of Jesus, I'll be next to, I'll be also behind Jesus all over that place. Me bao na and so large crowds were coming to Jesus, and then Jesus said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father, mother, wife, and children, brother and sisters, yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. He's saying, Now you're coming after me because you see all these good things that's happening. I'm going to ask you one thing. Because as a disciple, you don't come after Jesus. You become like him. If you come to Jesus, get your healing, the disciple dishes out healings. Isn't that amazing? That's why when Jesus came to back to life, the disciples were went back to fishing. He has to renew the call. And when Jesus was about to go to heaven, he said, Listen, I'm going to give you power because I'm out of here. You will be the little Jesus in these people. You used to come to me. You used to eat these uh, loaves. You gathered them together. You saw me do this. But as, as a disciple, you'll be doing this now. In fact, demons will be subject to you. He said, Raise the dead. Cleanse the leper. Heal the sick. You do that. This will be the disciple's job. And so he said, you got to have to, if you want to follow me, you got to put me first. And then he said, then carry your own cross. Carry your own cross. Have you ever been in a place where it's supposed to be a team, a team effort and somebody is not just not carrying his weight, but actually is adding a weight on the thing? Oh, yung nalala ko sa bagyo nun, tulakan ng kariton. We're supposed to push the cart uphill when you look back, somebody's already sitting. You're supposed to sit when it's downhill, not when you're going up. And so you're so mad and nobody wants to move. God is saying, carry your cross. Carry your cross. And then he said, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay down the foundation, not able to finish it, everyone will see it, will ridicule you, saying that per- this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. And then he said, suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't you first sit down and consider whether he's able to do with 10,000 men to oppose one coming against him with 20,000? If he's not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. In the same way, those who do not do, do, do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. And then he said, salt is good. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, it cannot be made salty again. Salt is good, but if it lost its saltiness, it cannot be made salty again. What is he saying here? After people have tasted the goodness of God, he is saying, there's another level. Say, there's another level. You could be a level whereby you just keep receiving, you will never be satisfied. The other portion is a level whereby you are giving. And God said, who has more, the one who's receiving or one that's giving? 
the one who's giving. And God is saying, I want you to be the giver. I have shown you the way where I have been giving. I want you to come up higher and be a giver. And that's the level of a disciple. Matthew 28, remember, God is saying, don't just stay where you are. I want you to come up to be a le- to level of the disciple because I want you to give. Because in giving, that's when people turn to the Lord. Amen? They will not turn to the Lord if you are needy, if you see you're always asking. But if you're always overflowing and giving, then people will turn to the Lord. He is saying only the disciples will be able to build towers and only the disciples can be able to fight wars. If you cannot do this, it's because you have not committed. The only thing God is saying, put me first, then you become a disciple. You qualify as a disciple. If you do not put me first, you cannot qualify as a disciple. Look at this uh, in Leviticus. I think I'm losing my, my mic. Am I? Yes, I am. Let me borrow one of this. Am I alive again? Hello. Hello. This is Leviticus. Chapter uh, 2, verse 13. This is what the Bible said. Season all your grain offerings with salt. Do not leave the salt of the covenant of your God. Out of your grain offerings, add salt to all your offerings. And Jesus is saying, a disciple is actually a salt. Remember, you are the salt of the earth. Now, I want you to turn to the person next to you. Do not lick him or her. He is salty. Say you are a salt. Did you know that regardless of how a food is prepared, if it has no flavor... It is not tasting any good. Amen? Pag sinabi nila ito, patis, ibinuhos mo hindi maalat. Yung ibinuhos mo, tsaa. Okay. Salt is good. It brings out, it brings out the flavor. It, it's also a preservative. Be, Jesus is saying, if you are not a disciple, you have no flavor in you. You are not creating anything for the kingdom. You're not adding anything for me because, in fact, in our translation, so that you'll just be picked up and thrown out. Now, of course, a salt, when it loses saltiness, in our time now, the salt just dissolves. It's gone. But in the Old Testament, in the the Bible, the salt comes in in, in many other amalgamation, like like sometimes there's iron in it, there's... uh, Calcium, there's other minerals, that's why the saltiness is gone, but the form is still there, and yet it does not have any taste. That's what Paul is, uh, Jesus is saying. And what happens is that they just use that to step on, you know, because it's, uh, it, it, uh, it, it's white. In fact, when we were in Dead Sea, you could see a lot of big patches or, uh, of, of salt. If you talk about grains of salt that are this big, they have these big bunches of salt, and I believe that's what Jesus is talking about. Now, discipleship brings out the salt. People can know you're around. People can, can see the goodness and the taste of it. In fact, Jesus said, because even in God, if you're disciples, if you taste good, all your offerings should be salted. That's what he's saying. Now, discipleship is, a, a disciple is a learner. You mean you commit yourself, you know, I'm going to learn more of you, Lord God, so I'm signing up to be a disciple. Let me learn from you. Let me, and learning is a, is, a, is a sequence of education whereby there's a culmination and there will be testing for that for sure. Uh, and it's systematic. It's, it's not like, a, oh, I want to learn Jesus every Wednesday. It's a learning. It becomes a lifestyle and God is calling for that. As I have mentioned, discipleship is the ancient path. We will see a lot of people in the Bible. There's around, around 200 people. Leaders in the Bible, only 25 of them succeeded. And if you would look, why? Because most of them were discipled, were educated. One of them we will see as Joshua. Joshua learned from Moses. He always sits by the, by the tent of meeting. He hears the discussions. And when God said, you're going to go over to the promised land, you're going to take over the promised land, Joshua was so excited, but the rest were saying, no, we cannot do this. Along with Caleb, of course. Another one was Elijah. He had a disciple by the name of Elisha. They, they talked together, they walked together. And so when Elijah left, Elisha was more powerful than Elijah because he was educated. Another person that was educated was Samuel. He learned under Eli. Eli cannot educate his kids. 
So he educated this Samuel, and Samuel became one of the most famous prophets in the Old Testament. He was, he was, uh, he was so powerful that he was actually the one who anointed David. But the move was so, in it's, it's such a way that God was able to direct his power, his prophecy, everything else about God through these people because they were disciples. Now we would look at people who were not discipled. Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. Grandfather David united the kingdom. Solomon made it bigger. When it's time for Rehoboam to sit down, it's time to be educated. He called the people who's been uh, giving uh, instructions to his father. And he, they gave these instructions, and then he called his friends. He said, well, what about you? Do you think what these old people are saying is right? And the friend said, no, tell them, tell them something else. And because he listened to the instructions of the young people as opposed to the ancient path, the kingdom that took uh, two kings to really make it strong fell apart and was never put back together because he failed to be educated. He failed. He said, no, I think the old people were some, saying something else. I want to go to the new path. And because of that, he failed. We know of... Uh, Samson. Samson belongs to a sect called the Nazirite. <clears throat> and I was, I was ty- typing this. My computer is saying, the Nazi. Right? Like, no, it's not a Nazi, right? He's supposed to know how it is to live as a Nazarene. A Nazirite. He did not go for that. The only thing that makes him look like he's a Nazirite is because of his long hair. Everything else was worldliness. When you look at the crowd... Samson has the long hair. And you could say, oh, he's a Nazarite. He looks holy. But inside, <clears throat> it's all junk. It's all lust. It's all everything else that the Bible doesn't want you to do. And so he failed. He eventually, of course, uh, got captured and they gouged out his eye. They cut off his hair. And now he's totally worldly. But he repented. Why did he fail? Because he failed to be educated. He failed to go through the system of the disciples at that time. <clears throat> Hebrews, it says in here, God is, uh, God can be approached in faith. Faith comes not because an earth, uh, a lightning comes in. There is first an education. This was the hearing. And hearing brings faith. Amen? Some of us probably will be so educated, but we have failed to yield so that we might be discipled. Discipling is a process. Discipling is a process whereby we can grow and grow and become the giver that God has wanted us to be. Now, like I mentioned before, the first step of discipleship is an encounter. You cannot choose to become a disciple if you do not know who you're going to follow. Amen? When we were back in the Philippines uh, during the communist times, People were forcefully indoctrinated in communism. It's, uh, we went to a town one time because there was a ceasefire. And I asked them, what do you, how, how come you did not leave during the time the communists were here? He said, we cannot. They blocked the, the roads and they closed the churches. You cannot go to church. They will ask everybody to come to the plaza. I think, I think it's up, Gala, guys. My battery was... They will ask them all to come to the plaza. And then as they would sit together, they would say, all right, go ask God for food. Literally, they would ask them to ask for food, and of course, no food comes. And then the communists would come and say, now ask me for food. Can we have food? And they distribute the food. Now, which is real, me or God? That's how they tried to indoctrinate the people. They indoctrinate them by fear, by subjugation, and they would punish or kill anybody who would go against them. Now, that's not discipleship. That's indoctrination. Discipleship is when you see the goodness of God, you're saying, Lord, I've seen your goodness. I want to be like you. I want to follow you. I want to yield to you. I want to become like you. I want to follow the way you have set. I want to go through the ancient path. It's called submission. Jesus submitted to the Father. And we know that he said, my, my will is the will of the Father. I'm here to do the will of my Father. I am with him. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Paul himself submitted to the apostles. Remember, he recognized the leadership in Jerusalem. 
And so in the end, this is what God is saying. Because the Bible said, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations. The question would be, how would you know that you, that you have been growing in your faith? 